it's been quite a few, what a month, so I probably put something out. Been very busy at work, uh, both works. Uh, lots of stuff going down. Getting ready for Christmas, my wife's birthday, went out of town, then I get sick. And uh, having to find another family ride pretty quick because my wife got in a wreck and I got to fix her Honda. So, uh, give me a minute and uh, I'll get another one spun up and I'll throw it out real quick because I'm probably sitting on probably 10 videos now. Short, very short ones, but that's all I can get done. So, give me a minute. Well, just home from work. Had to do, had to honey do list at Walmart. I had to pick stuff up. But uh, here in a minute, uh, I'm gonna get changed clothes. And uh, Thumper's little server cert clutch servo is giving me issues. And if I'm wiggling around, I gotta go to the bathroom. But uh, I need to change clothes, and then uh, we'll get under there and get that thing pulled off. So uh, give me a few minutes. Meow. Mama didn't feed y'all, did she? What we have here is a fine specimen. 2009 Smart. Been on the channel. It's got, uh, the smart people know, smart being not intelligent, smart owners know that these have a uh, five speed, you can call it G-Trag or get rag, whatever you want. If you're going to get a rag to mop up the leaks they make. Um, but for the clutch, you know, it's got a it's got a servo with a uh, position sensor on it for the clutch. It pushes it in manually, and then it's got an X Y for the uh, shift gates or force, whatever you want to call them. And it's all computer controlled. You have no clutch pedal. It's all done with load, brake, all that. So it just goes in there. But anyway, position sensor jacked up on me yesterday, and uh, it set a code. But of course, check engine light didn't go come on. You know, that's coming from a car where if you just disconnect the uh, the seat with the key on you got about a hundred dollar tool at a minimum to go ahead and clear the code because your uh, airbag but you know you have something as brutal as that as the clutch of the uh, clutch servo not working which so brutal and almost tearing your transmission up to feel like it's going to rip your clutch out you know it don't set that off hmm. anyway enough ranting and raving let's go ahead and fix this thing I cleared the code, it runs like a dream now. So it was just went into its little limp mode and that's why I was doing what it was doing. So uh, let's go ahead and yank that thing off and clean it all up. That's probably just all it's gonna need. So we'll get started on this thing. Now we got old Bambi's tail in the air. Let's get to it. As you can tell, that's it right there plug in on the top up here up there and there's two bolts one right here one right here and there's one on the back side <clears throat> right there facing the front of the vehicle well i'm going to I'm gonna match mark something here in here so I can uh, make sure I put it back exactly where it is because these are adjustable as you can tell and we don't want to get it out of adjustment so uh, let's get this thing unplugged and go ahead and get it off and those are those e-sockets I mean those are e-heads for those e-sockets so I don't know it looks like a what 10 I don't know I got the whole set Let's go ahead and yank this puppy off and let's go ahead and tear it down. I've been wanting to do this either way. So, uh, we'll, uh, let's go ahead and just get it off. Enough talking. And then, uh, I'll meet you at the bench because uh, my battery is kind of low. All right. Here it is in all its glory. It sat on just like this on the transmission and clutch fork right here. And I thought the plug was up here. It's not. It's angled off in the back. Two little pins you push and comes right off. It's really easy. All right, so it looks like we got, taking my glasses on, 
a spring around this boot to hold it on there. So go and yank that off. I guess it might be the right time to tell y'all right now that it's got a big warning on the side and I'll read that in just a minute. You know, after I'm starting doing it. And if I haven't said it before, I've never done one of these. I've never had one of these off. I don't know what I'm in for. Apparently I'm gonna be in for a treat. So, um, Okay, it's got a little lip on there. It's smarter than me. So give me a minute, I get it off. Ta-da. Spring's still on it. We'll leave it there. Alright. Alright, let me go ahead and take this part on the Okay, well here's what it said for the warning. It's made by Smart, a German company. S A C H S socks. Anyway, little letters. Do not actuate without clutch load. Okay. Warning: Do not open. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I ain't got that kind of money. It's, it's getting open. Next size down. I mean, what is it? Metric? Or did I have the original right one to begin with? I think I did. Yep. Pop these screws out. It's just got like debris in there or something. I just want to see how it works, really. Mm. All right, let's learn together. Pull all these screws out there is three or six. Yeah. So. A little seal on it. Got some debris. Got a lot of plastic parts. They ain't going to lie. Because there's the uh, little motor. And you really can't get in there to see how it functions. There's got to be a some type of potentiometer or something in there to get position. Put a little grease back on that when we put it back together. Clean it off so it doesn't get on my arm. It's 
So what it looks like to me is that this little black plate right there could possibly be the position sensor under the motor. It's probably just a stepper motor. So that's those internals. I'm going to go ahead and stick two I guarantee you, the size of that spring right there, she's under some kind of load. So if I take that motor assembly off, it might ta -toing. Figures got one of those one way clips on it. You know, what was wrong by putting a washer in an E clip? But I can run some grease down in there and some grease on this gears right here with it still being together. I don't know, I'm pulling that motor off. I mean, I'm doing it. I'm on it. I'm just putting this back together so uh, nothing flies out the bottom uncontrollably. T27. Notice I didn't pull them all the way out because as I thought this thing is under a load well really not that much of a load now guys I'm a trained professional what that means is I could duck for cover run with my tail tucked between my legs and squint faster than the average human being that's all it means about trained professional position sensors under there.
It's impressive. Very. I was really to hope and find some gunk in here. I mean, something that I was able to really get in there and clean. And it's got these tabs, and it's not beneath me to uh, take this off. I just wanted to see uh, if there's something that I can do. You know, it's probably got a clocking on it or something. Yep, that's what we're doing. some heft to it. Now, that's a thin case, so if you do like I'm doing here, I'm going to pry it this direction. Don't put too much pressure. You don't want to break the magnets in there. This is a permanent magnet situation. Remember they line up like that. It only goes on one or two ways, right way and wrong way. Take that clippy loose right there. There's no ring right there. It's hoping I didn't I didn't want it to come apart down through here, so I'm trying to hold it. Hopefully this top part would come off by itself. It's got a roller bearing in there. Like it might be futile. See, not having one of these apart before. You no, know, I wouldn't mind just pulling all this out together if it's an induction motor. I don't know if it is or not. But uh, if for some reason. It's got some, uh, uh, I just don't want to leave myself out of pocket here with no clutch. Okay. Okay. Permanent magnets, yes. But all the, uh, the uh, commutator brushes are up there. Which didn't make this any easier because, you know, the position sensor is what I was really after. To see how it worked. that bearings pressed on and I don't have a little gear puller but uh come to think of it more than likely it's a hall effect and there's no way to actually clean it 
So what we're gonna do, guys, I'm gonna clean this out. I'm gonna put this thing back together with new grease and all that, and we're gonna try it. So this is more of a tutorial on how to not fix one of these. So I'm game. This is a failed mission, but uh, learning. I'll take it. So let me clean all this out. This is uh, got to kind of watch it. I don't want to wash that uh, that sealed uh, that uh, ball bearing out right there. It don't look sealed. But I'm going to clean it out with some uh, contact cleaner. I got some right here somewhere. What did I do with it? I was fixing two amplifiers for church and I uh, used it. I don't know what to do with it. There it is. Give me a minute, I'm going to spray this out. Let it air dry. All right, we'll let the rest of it air dry. Got it nice and clean in there. It's as good as I'm going to get. I mean, it is what it is. So, I get you back when this thing has fully air dried. No, nope, I'm gonna let that air dry and then uh, work on uh, greasing some of this stuff up. get a little of that grease out of there and let me check the consistency see if it's like what I got it looks like it was white lithium it smells like white lithium Yeah, I'm gonna run up to the store and get some white lithium grease and use that to put it back together with. Cause that looks like what was in it. And I don't wanna put anything too thick or too thin. So we're gonna go back with it. So give me just a few. I'm gonna run up to the store. I gotta wash my paws. Use a different vehicle because apparently mine's down right now. We're gonna get some here in a minute. Yeah, that's dried up white lithium. Oh, we got some white lithium grease here. Go ahead and cut the tip off. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pack some in there. I'm going to use this sticker here to kind of push it on in those teeth. Attempt. Try. You know, all the above. Nice and pretty all through there. There we go. Uh -oh. 
wipe this clean. Get a little carb cleaner and get it nice and clean. I don't know about y'all, but I do remember a universe where the advertised, advertised brake clean for not being flammable. This is all another carburetor cleaner now. I'm just getting it as clean as I can because I don't want moisture. That that seal's still good, but I sure don't want no moisture getting up in there. Cause you know it's right under the car. I mean, right under the car. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not. I, in my eyes, they're not machined 100 percent right. They're just way tight. off to the side and let's go ahead and this motor should be dry let's go ahead and put this thing back together Assemble this and then I'll clean the worm gear up a little bit. Go. go ahead and squish these back down. She's got a little alignment dials right there. Using the vise to hold it together. I'm going to pack it back around a little bit and then get the pliers on it. This ain't working out in my favor on this one. I hope it don't come flying out when I do this. If you heard me talk to somebody, ask me going to work. It's uh, one of my boys, him and my daughter. But the youngest daughter is under the weather. And, you know, we've been known to go to work sick because, uh, you know, bills ain't going to pay themselves. I can put that in the vise just like that. Try to squirt it. Yep, that worked. Let me do this one too while I'm at it. There we go. All right. Spin it by hand, feels good. Well, this thing's almost got a knife edge on it. Almost hurt somebody with this. So I can show you how sharp this thing is. Bit of focus. Yeah, maybe that'll show you how sharp that thing is. 
Links. Right. Stuff wasn't cheap. This stuff was out of 11 bucks. Well, military was like 10 bucks. All right. Let's set this back down in here. This went to uh, was going to fix something to uh, pretty much an inspection. You know, I didn't get to do everything I wanted to do. I wanted to get in there and do something, but if yeah, if I knew it was on the end of that motor from the get go, which you know, probably a little research probably would have told me that. But I wanted to go in this completely blind. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to. So. But you know, like I always say, I don't know everything, but you're not going to clean up a Hall Effect. They rarely fail. If they fail because of over, uh, the uh, alignment issue or, uh, you know, the bias voltage that's applied to it's too high, you know, over time, blah, blah, you know, those kinds of things. But they, as a, it's just a coil. It's a pickup coil. It's not that, uh, you know, it's got a mass amount of voltage applied to it, so it rarely go out. And there's really no debris in that motor, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I'm sure I'll get somebody to tell me I did something wrong, but you know what? It is what it is. You yeah. know? But, so I got a full, full on inspection. And a good wipe down, new grease. So uh, we'd just say it was a maintenance dilly that we did here. All right. Uh, my theory is is that uh, the only way my theory is going to hold water is that there's nothing really wrong with the sensor being a hall effect because they hardly ever fail. So uh, what I'm thinking is is there a bad connection, which is always a given at some point especially if it's, uh, uh, you know, 80s and 90s Fords. And uh, that uh, since it since it senses the, uh, the motor turning, excuse me, it doesn't sense it, it actually sees the position based on Hall Effect. And I don't know the resolution of it. But either way, if the motor couldn't turn because something was bound up in here, that uh, briefly... It could it could throw the code because it's put voltage at the motor, but it's not seeing the movement that it anticipates. So if it's a mechanical issue, it can actually give a feedback problem. So if I'm right on that, then we're good to go. If I'm not right on it, we'll be getting one off eBay eventually. Oh, look at that! I wiped all the oh fooey. Let's put my logo on there. <laughs> my logo. But I'm also going to put the date. What I do with my. Let me go find my paint pen. I'm going to put the date in which I did serviced it. <laughs> what do y'all think of that? Y'all see that all right? All right. That's done. All right, I'm going to st stick it on and we'll test it. Guys, that's not a grease spot because that grease spot's going to move here in just a minute. All by itself. Move grease spot. I'm so confident I'm putting my tools up. 
I'm going to regret it. I'm gonna try to get you on a test drive and show you how hilarious this thing is. And I'll wind it up so you can hear it shift. So, like I said, I run mine a full manual. So I'm gonna hold it with my left hand because I'm gonna upshift with the uh, paddle shift. Let off the brake. It slowly gives it gas and it lets it out for all four of you. I'm not doing that, computer does that. So, I gotta go get headlights. Because, uh, again, one went out. So, we're going to take off. And it's going to hold first, because I got it manual. Watch the headlights dip. See, all that's done automatically. My foot stays on the gas. I ain't got to take it off. And no, that's not wide open. It is a little quicker than that. So, and then, you know, it's paddle shift, you down shift. Third, second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her all she's got. And my foot's to the floor, I'm just shifting it with the paddle shift. Oh, really? My luck, I bet they only law around. But anyway, it, it wasn't impressive, I know it. But, We'll go get some headlights and we'll get back. Round two, forgot my wallet. So, uh, I'm actually gonna give it all, all the beans here again and test it out of first gear. So I gotta change hands because I gotta paddle shift. Let's try this again, immediately to the floor. I'm just gonna put the headlights in. I ain't gonna bore y'all putting headlights in. It don't take just a minute. Sorry, you can shift down on the uh, on the shifter too. So anyway, so uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, like I said, this went from a, supposed to be a repair to more of a general maintenance video. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. I believe that one's probably gonna be a real short one. Being I was putting in a uh, a uh, multifunction switch, combo switch, turn signal switch, whatever you want to call it, on that Jeep Compass. So uh, God bless, and y'all have a good weekend.